Harvest Chapel International presents the Overcomers Convention 2019 theme 7 for Significant Impact. Ministering at OC 2019 are Reverend Dr. Isaac Quay, Bread of Life Christian Center, Bishop Gideon Titi Ofe, Pleasant Place Church, Reverend Dr. Michael Bodin Yamiche, the Maker's House Chapel International, and Prophet Prince from Pong, Kingdom Praise Ministries USA. It's from Wednesday, 27 November to Sunday, 1st December 2019, 6 p.m. from Wednesday to Saturday at 9 a.m. on Sunday at the Tehila Temple Harvest Chapel International, South Tesano. Morning sessions on Friday 29th and Saturday 30th November with Dr. David Eldon Schroeder from the Pillar College USA. Spread the word and don't come alone. Your host is Reverend Fitzgerald Odonko. Music by Harvest Gospel Choir and others. Oh, Before I do anything, and um, let me get this out of the way. You know, when we say you should clap in our part of the world, I've told you before that we use clapping for many things, including killing mosquitoes. And so for you to make sure to help us know that you are not trying to kill a mosquito, if you are clapping, you should clap very well that we know it is onto the praise. Oh, you put your hands together let us celebrate the king of kings the lord of lords the ancient of days our soon coming king hallelujah amen hallelujah i, I keep saying that if you happen i mean god bless you so much you are amazing i mean you're amazing those who play the, the musicians, you are fantastic. And those of you who sing, you are breathtaking. I, I, was, I was with the bishop and I said, But will you help me? Let us celebrate our beautiful handsome our anointed music ministry amen we also we also want to acknowledge the presence of our pastors and and all of you god bless you great people we, we celebrate god we thank god for your lives amen we are grateful to god for you I don't have a lot of time, but it will be suicidal if I don't even share the kind of impact that the ministry of our father, of our bishop, and his wife has made on my life personally. Let me probably say this. There were, there were times that I was considering whether to do only ministry and forget about any other thing whether being in the academia or being in the corporate world and one time somebody was telling me of things i said okay at least that is a challenge he has inspired me on a personal level i do many things because i took inspiration from him and i'm glad you you cut the path for us to follow that you've blazed that trail you have inspired some of us to do what we do now will you help me let us celebrate our father and our mother great people god has given to us um, hallelujah amen I was given one hour and so I'm trying to make sure that I box everything within an hour preaching praying ministering prophesying <laughs> all in one hour I also thank God for I've seen um, okay my I, I, I have a where's my student uh, where is she I have a student who's a, okay yes she is there there, there she is She's my student. Yesterday, I was wrapping up her class. She is um, in the auditing class. I was teaching the marketing management. And she said, oh, I'll meet you tomorrow. And she told her friend that you have to come because maybe 
ne exams no be me a poor back o china you know i am just i'm just telling on you because you said it in class um well i'm going to give you an apport that is different from <laughs> the exam you'll be writing but of course she knows i'm a generous person and so they know what to expect from me only that my eyes are normally hard right uh, right. Exactly right but if you came with your bible you please lift up your bible with me very quickly and um, i want to share something with you and then we will move straight away um, <laughs> well she's not the first um, harvest person who has been in my class is i think the second or the third and so gradually we are um, and i'm not planning on stopping or leaving the academia because i'm getting the opportunity to also affect other lives muslims buddhists and um, she will tell you yesterday after my class i still preach to them ask her after I finished everything, I said to them, well, it will be an affront on my faith if I only teach you this book called Marketing Management and not tell you what brought me here. So I started with them. I spoke to them about giving your life to Christ and worshiping God and not neglecting the God factor. Now, and in that class you will have buddhists uh, oh, muslims everybody is there they are all doing their masters and that is the class i want they told me teach the undergrad too i said no you pay graduate school when i'm paying for no on our margin i said that all right such an amazing thing to be here i mean i i love harvest I love this church very much and um, I'm super excited to be here the Spirit of God is here. here you don't even struggle to flow because the anointing is here already there is purity you know when you get to a place that the Spirit is pure everything everything falls in place there is proper alignment in the Spirit you have your Bibles with you could you please lift it up I don't want to preach an everlasting sermon today but lift it up with me and say this is my bible it is the word of god i'll become what it says i can become i'll go where it says i can go i will achieve what it says i can achieve slap your chest and say i am a believer please do it again say i am a believer i want to invite your attention to the book of st louis gospel chapter number seven I'm inviting your attention to St. Louis Gospel, chapter number seven. I've seen some of my mates from the University of Cape Coast, especially Patricia. I've seen you right there, and I'm glad you are still holding on to the faith. Okay, Luke's Gospel, chapter number seven. St. Louis Gospel, chapter number seven. If you found it, you can say, I have it. If you're still looking for it, you can say, wait for me. All right, hurry up. In the book of St. Louis, Gospel, chapter number 7, from the 11th verse, the thundering diction of the King James Bible, if you've opened there, you'll find these words. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came now to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not and he came and touched the bier or the casket or the coffin and they that bore him stood still and he said young man i say unto thee arise If the Bible is yours, you can underline, young man, comma, I say unto thee, comma, arise. For me, we'll, we'll, we'll come to it later. And he that was dead sat up, and he began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen among us, 
and that God has visited his people and his rumor went forth throughout there was a rumor but the rumor was of him and um, let's pray Heavenly Father, we know that grass will wither, the flower will fade, but your word will abide forever. We pray that you give us a word that works so God. Anoint these lips of clay, make it an instrument of a blessing to somebody's life. Speak to me, speak through me, and speak for me. Spirit of God, that at the end, Jesus will be glorified and your church will be edified. In Jesus' name we have prayed, amen. Before you take your seat, I want you to look for seven people and tell them, hang on a minute. Just hang on a minute. I want to look for seven people and tell them, neighbor, oh neighbor, hang on just a minute. Say neighbor, oh neighbor, hang on just a minute. Say neighbor, oh neighbor, hang on a minute. Can you look for somebody who doesn't even know you believe in you has never heard you speak before and tell the person neighbor oh neighbor hang on just a minute there are people who don't even know you are prophetic they don't know you can prophesy but that word is not for you let's tell that neighbor neighbor i am speaking to you as a child of god hang on just a minute hang on just a minute if you've done that you can sit comfortably in the presence of God somebody will say sit on the necks of your adversaries you can sit on the necks of your adversaries and when you're sitting on the necks of your adversaries you don't sit in that gentle manner but this is the presence of God there is no adversary here everybody here loves you you truly believe that I want to start by saying that most of the things that God will want to do with you in you for you around you by you um, on the look of it will never make sense I like to sermonically tell you that most of the things that God will want to do with you because this God there is no searching of his understanding and because of that whatever God will himself want to do initiate or start with your life oftentimes will not make sense we serve the God who starts things and whatever he does defies what is called common sense because technically if it is sensible or if it is commonsensical then it means that you can apply that and it will work for you but if it is true faith faith is supposed to come from the bowels of things that do not make sense to the natural mind is it not strange that God will appear to them the family of Moses and say unto them that I want to save your son called Moses but the only way I can save that boy is if you put a boy in a basket and put a basket on a river but if the basket will not drown because you've padded it nicely to serve as a canoe. You, you, you should be mindful where it is being placed because God had said unto them that place the basket on Nile. Nile is already a crocodile infested river. If God wants to save, why do you push me near death? because you want to save my son probably you should dispatch angels deploy angels from the throne room and let them guard our house you can protect us you can save us if you want my child to be saved you can save my child by bringing angels around him why are you saying that i should put a child in a basket and place a basket on a river and not just any river the river called now which has a lot of crocodiles but god always has an agenda when he is always giving you a command it is a wise is God he knows the end from the beginning and he knows the beginning from the end and and because of that with God God lives in a place called the eternal now I will explain that because when it comes to God there is no past present or future 
He says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the key and the operating word, the operational word there is same. Which means that he lives in the eternal now. When it comes to God, he lives in the mysterion, the past, the present, the future are all lumped into one and is in him. God does not dwell in eternity. Eternity dwells in God. Because he was there before eternity began. The God who began the beginnings when there was no beginning. Even before the beginning began, he had begun the beginning even before the beginning in himself. That is eternity residing in God. So before God will say that I want to save that boy, God had made provision for redemption. But the plan to rescue this boy did not make sense to the mother. You want to save my boy, put the boy on Nile. Nile has crocodiles. God said, yeah, I understand that. But don't just allow the basket to move with the tides of the river. I want your daughter to push. You want to kill my two kids. Because the crocodiles can eat the girl and also eat the baby. And God said, no, push the basket. Where am I pushing the basket to? This doesn't make sense. But God is saying, push the baby until you get to the place where the adversaries are. Because on the Nile, you will find people. But in a place by the Nile, you will find the daughter of Pharaoh having her bath. What was God doing? God was planning and thinking about giving free tuition, free scholarship. He was giving school fees to the man called Moses. When the parents were thinking, how are we going to raise this child? God had gone ahead of them and thinking, I want to enroll this boy in the University of Egypt that he will not have to pay fees. But when God was starting it, it did not make sense. Is it not strange, people of God, that that is the kind of God we serve. That when he wants to do things, they will never. That the man called Moses, the man called Abraham will be old and everybody will be calling him an old man. You don't have a child. And God will appear to him and say, I will make you the father of many nations. At the time, he had to just oppose his age with the word of God. And the scripture says at a point, he, well, those of us who are sanctimonious, who are, who are more pious than Abraham, who say that he made a mistake. Because this man called Abraham listened to the voice of the wife and the Bible says slept with a handmaiden, the slave, and had a child called Ishmael. And God did not rebuke him. Until the woman had driven the baby away. And this man went to God and said, God, I don't have any child. My wife has driven my only boy in the house away. God said, who gave you the direction for the baby? Said my wife. Did you come to me to consult whether you should sleep with a woman or not? No, sir. If you did not listen to me before you took that initiative, you shouldn't listen to me before you take the next action. Is it not strange that most of us do things on our own and expect God to correct it? Well, let me just scratch the surface for you before we get into the substance of the test because of my time. But check this test. The Bible says that an Ishmael had been born and Ishmael had been driven out of the house. But before Ishmael was driven out, Ishmael was only driven out because the promise was born. Isaac was born. And uh, at a point in your life, you will always confront your mistakes and your promise in the same house. The mistakes you make in your lifetime will live side by side the promises of God that he has placed on you. And you will have all of them under the same roof as long as you live. You will have to decide where you will part that company. But technically when we see that and we see God not rebuking them, all that we say is that this doesn't make 
sense. But God will always know why he allows certain things to happen. And the Bible says that a man called Joseph, who was a dreamer, was born. And Joseph was envied by his brothers. And they wanted to kill the man called Joseph. And they had placed him. Of course, they have taken the coat of many colors. They've, they've killed the animal. They have sprinkled the blood and, uh, and soaked um, this to coat in the blood. And they are taking, they were about taking it to the father. They were contemplating, do we kill this boy? What do we do to the boy? And the Bible says, and there came the Ishmaelite. The Ishmaelite came to rescue the promise. Isaac's lineage would have been cut short had it not been the presence of the baby of Hagar. When they were saying that it was a mistake and Abraham has made a mistake, what they called a mistake was God's insurance. Can I talk to you? They were thinking that the man called Abraham has made a mistake in bringing forth Ishmael. Fast forward years down the line, Joseph is about to be killed and there came the Ishmaelite. And so what was supposed to kill the promise was preserved by the same mistakes that the man made. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice that whatever mistake you have made in your lifetime, may God use it as a springboard to safeguard your tomorrow can, can, I, can I preach to you so often times what God will want to do will not make sense really it won't make sense because we are limited that's like the Latins who say finitum non capas infinitum the finite cannot comprehend the infinite. He is the infinite God and there is no way those of us with limited vision can see what he sees. So most of the things that God will want you to do, if you are to put them on a scale or on a balance, you can tell yourself, no, this doesn't make sense. Can you imagine God telling you, empty your bank account and put it on the altar? this doesn't because you're thinking of the bills but maybe God is just observing whether you will be obedient because your singular obedience might open an eternal door of abundance such is the discipline as discussed in the discourse of Luke chapter number 7 from the verse number 11 if you are to read your test and you are sure about it the Bible says there was a nonsensical situation. A woman was about to bury the only son. It doesn't make sense. I believe the woman will be wringing her head and saying this doesn't make sense. Why? Because the Bible says for she was a widow. That means that that was not her first time visiting the cemetery. It means she has been to the cemetery and she was just repeating in marketing we call it repeated purchase she was just going on the same tangent what happened to her she was going back to the cemetery but when jesus saw her jesus had to stop it because the bible says affliction shall not rise again the second time i pray for everybody here whatever form of affliction the devil had brought around you we stop the voice of darkness and we drown the hand of hell I, I, I just read the test and very nonsensical. The Bible says that in, there was a procession, a funeral procession out of a place called Nain. And it will amaze you to know that that was the first time Nain was being mentioned because it was an obscure town. 
Is it not strange that God will go through obscured places to find somebody? Is it not strange that some of us, we were abandoned, we were relegated, we were forgotten, and yet God bypassed all the other people and places and located somebody under this roof. Wherever you are, if you know that you are somebody that God searched and, and God went through so many things just to find you, I just want you to just wave at me, but there are a few of us who know that God went beyond just going through places because we were lost and forgotten obscured place and yet Jesus was going through Nain Nain in, in the language or tongue means beauty or charm can you imagine how some of us our lives are supposed to be beautiful and yet out of our lives is coming death instead of progression and promotion we face stagnation and redundancy from today i stand with the with the bishop of the house and we make declarations over this assembly whatever is against or contrary to the kind of grace and splendor god has placed on your life we pray and we stop that voice that has been speaking against you may the lord bring you out of that in the name of jesus I want to quickly get out of my test because uh, there is much to talk about. Jesus is entering Nain, but the boy could not wait for Jesus to come before he passed. It's interesting to also note, or let me put it parenthetically, that most of us, when it is about time for our visitation, that's the time. God has been watching your service over the years and you have been serving in, in Harvest Chapel. You have been cleaning, you have been serving, you have been serving diligently, you've been giving, you've been doing all of that. And right about the time that Jesus was about to favor you and turn your life around, that was the time he said, I have been serving all these years and I've not seen anything. I am tired, I'm fed up, I am going. And right about when Jesus was entering, that was the time the boy was gone most of us we miss our breakthrough right at the time that there is going to be a visitation if you read St. Luke's gospel chapter number 7 if you read it carefully the Bible says when they had come to Jesus about the centurion they said he loves our nation because he has built for us a synagogue so there are people who when they work for God they think it is in vain your labor in the Lord will never be in vain it is impossible for somebody to serve God to worship God in spirit and in truth and be sacrificial and give and serve God for their labor to be in vain. it's impossible it is impossible God is not a man to lie neither is he a son of a man to say a thing and to repent if he says it the Bible says he would do it well, let us hurriedly get out of that because that is not the crust of the matter. Jesus is entering in. They are bringing the dead body out. And the Bible says, uh, uh, when Jesus had seen the boy, when Jesus had seen the boy, Jesus did not talk to the boy. Jesus did not talk to the people who were leading the procession. Jesus never even... Um, when on any discussion with the undertakers none of them Jesus went to the mother because your Jesus my Jesus our Jesus can be affected by our predicament there were many people there but Jesus knew who was most bereaved please don't forget that he was coming into a strange land he doesn't know them but when Jesus saw the one who was bereaved, Jesus could tell. Don't make a mistake to think that he doesn't know how you feel, what you're going through. He, he, he knows everything. The Bible says that when I go through the water, he will go in through it with me. And when I am through the fire, he is with me. Can you look at somebody and say, he feels what I feel? Well, maybe you have not read your scripture enough, but if you have, just ask uh, the church stands for. This church is a word-based church, and we know that, that we have a high priest who, we don't have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities because he was in every way 
So when I'm going through pain, he feels my pain. When I'm going through wahala, he feels my wahala. When the tides of time are pushing me to the reef of life, Jesus feels it too. When everything is against who I am, what I stand for, this Jesus, your Jesus, my Jesus, our Jesus, is always affected by our predicament. My first point, for those of you who are scribes, is that Jesus is affected by our predicament. I don't have a lot of time, so let me rush you a bit. Is that fine? Rush you. He can be affected, and he is always affected by our predicament. That there is nothing that we feel that he doesn't feel it. Whatever you feel, whatever you are going through, sometimes you might think that you are in it alone. Sometimes you might be thinking that he doesn't care as thou not that we perish. Sometimes. Especially when you see how the unbelievers are doing well and the believers are hemorrhaging. Especially when you look around and those who don't even pray in the workspace, they are always getting the promotion and you will be praying. Lunchtime, you are praying. Every time you are praying. And yet things appear to stagnate. Carest thou not that we perish. And interestingly, this Jesus is affected by our predicament. The next point that I want to raise because I want to, I, I was told that people in Harvest are scribes and they are, they are a bunch of intellectuals. And if you are not an intellectual, you are not even admitted into Harvest Chapel. When I was coming, that was what I, in fact, there was a time I was talking to Pastor Eugene and Pastor Eugene said that to me. He said, he said to me, he said, he said, Doc, 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 I have this four day. He said, intellectuals, so let us go on an intellectual discourse. Because when we intellectuals, you have a pastor, a local assembly. Jesus can be affected, is affected, will always be affected by our predicaments. Whatever we go through is affected by them. The Bible says that Jesus did not talk to anybody, but Jesus went to the woman and said, weep not. When I read that text for the first time, I got mad. I said, how can you be that insensitive? Somebody has lost their only child. The husband is gone already. She is a widow lost the only child and the only thing she can do is to weep and if weeping was not good you wouldn't have given us tear ducts it's good for the soul sometimes it's good to just weep and let the priest stand and in between the porch and the altar is it not in the bible let the priest weep in between the porch and the altar and cry out and say spare your people Weeping is good sometimes. Sometimes when your wife is weeping, allow her to weep. It's food for the soul. When your husband is weeping, don't say bear men soup. Allow, allow him to weep. But when I read it, I, I said to myself, but how could you be that insensitive? Because She's lost everything. Everything. But I was mad until I had a reality check. And I checked to find out who said it. 
because if it was said by a father a mother a brother an uncle then you couldn't have banged with it but if it was said by the head lifter the way maker the covenant keeper the God who sits upon the circles and the thrones of the earth is there anybody who has a word of God on your life is there anybody that Jesus has spoken over your life and you've got into a place you are weeping the problem is the strength of the logos is in the authorship of the one who gave it the bible you hold is called the graphe so somebody who is an atheist can pick it up and burn it because there is no power in that even people who print them most of them are unbelievers it's called the graphe when you pick it up with understanding ooh, my time you see the problem with this generation this modernistic neo pentecostal neo charismatic 21st century christian generation is that we move from revelation to application and that has been our problem if you move from revelation to application you always be in error you have to move from revelation to observation from observation to interpretation then you move from interpretation to application the reason why somebody can say odifobifa aywa and what in chinigu no di gunsum it is because they are moving from revelation to application without observation and interpretation let me try to help you. so your bible is a graphe 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 etymologically graphic graphe from graphe if you pick your bible with understanding that it is the word of god then it becomes logos when you move from having an understanding that it is the word of god into the place where it is a word of god for me then it becomes a rima unfortunately most people are reading the bible without knowing that what is in there is for them the last time i was preaching to you about the woman with the issue of blood i told you i remember every sermon i've preached here i told you that anonymity suggests inclusiveness do you remember that that anytime you are reading the bible that there is nobody's name mentioned it means that god wants you to put your name there if you understand writing anonymity suggests inclusiveness do i have time my time is forgive me forgive me all right forget it let me scrap all of that so that i can save you some time jesus doesn't talk to anybody but the woman and says weep not and because he said weep not i read it and i realized that the woman did not say anything somebody saying weep not he could have even said okay the woman is not saying anything and i read it and i realized that is the stage where we always find ourselves sometimes when you are in a fix and your heart is overwhelmed you don't even want any conversation with anybody when my heart is overwhelmed lord lead me to a rock that is higher than i is there anybody who has that as a prayer in your heart you've got into a place that your heart is overwhelmed you don't even know what to say to another person they are asking you why are all these things happening and you have no words to explain plain maybe your heart is overwhelmed but we pray that God will hold you by his hand and lead you to a rock that is higher than where you are can I prophesy to about 10 people who are ready for a prophetic word that may God lead you to a place where you will find out that there is greener pastures and still waters for you I just feel like prophesying to a few of you there is a prophetic gush 
I just had in my spirit. The one who said, weep not, is not a kokubunsa. The one who said, weep not, is not prophet who, prophet who. Because in Ghana, we have the rasmatas of men clamoring for titles. Failing to appreciate that having a, a title doesn't make you entitled. Because the fact that people are calling you prophet does not mean you are prophetic. A prophet is not somebody who has theories to explain why a prophecy did not come to pass. I'm just trying to suppress myself so I don't go on a particular tangent. It was not said by a prophet who wants the national or societal or congregational acclaim. It was said by the one and only true God, the one who when he says a thing, he has the commensurate ability to bring it to pass. And I stand on this holy altar and I pray that every prophecy God has placed on your life, may that word come to pass in 2019. May you see the hand of God at work. Can I, can I push it forward? Because it's important that we understand people of God. That Jesus said, weep not. And the woman also did not say anything because her heart was overwhelmed. And Jesus knowing that the woman was not in a state to answer the Bible says, Jesus left the woman. Went to those who were carrying the bier or the casket. Did not engage them in a debate. Because these days uh, we have reduced the power of God into uh, things that are logical. We want to debate, we want to bring people into debate. No, the power of God is not in, the, in man's wisdom, but it is in the demonstration. Jesus did not say, hey, boys, where are you taking this guy to? Jesus did not. Man of God, the Bible says that Jesus got there and Jesus touched the casket. And that is where I picked my sermon from. Because they were going to bury destiny that was not yet fulfilled. And Jesus said, hang on a minute. I do not bury this boy until I place my hand on that boy. I pray that whatever was on the way to the burial ground, may the Lord God place his hand. Uh, maybe you are not getting, maybe somebody here will understand this. This place is a bit weak for me. The, Jesus got there and the Bible says that when Jesus got there, he placed his hand. Jesus did not pray. Because prayer that works is not the one that is done publicly. Prayer that brings the miraculous is done in the closet. It is the fruits that are seen when you get outside. Maybe, maybe, let me try to just oppose this so that somebody who is trying to get their prayer gear on will not be derailed. Most of us are only obsessed with the physical, visible fruits. But what really brings us the power is the invisible spiritual roots. And so the things that gives us the grounding are not seen by the naked eye. It is not what everybody sees. Some people will come to church and when there is prayer, they will clap and make a lot of noise in the church. But when they are in their houses, they don't even know where their Bibles are. With them, the Bible, the devil will be looking at them and say, okay. Jesus did not talk to anybody did not pray just laid on his hand on the casket the bible says that and immediately 
all the people that were carrying the boy they stood still oh that i can preach that for another day because the bible says that they froze that is what it really means they froze whatever was carrying you to your grave we pray that jesus will place his hand on them and may they freeze in the name now this place is weak for me today maybe you're not getting what i'm trying to talk about but when jesus places his hand the bible says they froze please don't forget because in contest you have to understand that the boy was young he had died prematurely and jesus knew that that was not his destiny but there were people that although it was not the destiny of the boy they were assigned to carry the boy who had not fulfilled his destiny to bury the boy in a grave that means that even though you are living there are people who the devil will assign to carry you out of the places where you are supposed to manifest but today we freeze any negative person any adversity from the camps of hell whoever will be assigned from hell against this church called harvest chapel against your ministry against your family against your finances we pray that the hand of god the bible says in the hand of jesus was placed on it and immediately the bible says and they froze and jesus spoke to the boy and said young man come on because of course a New Testament trans translation we lost about 8,000 words and so every word in the Bible every sign every punctuation mark is important he said young man you find a comma there because there was an actual person he was talking to but the boy is dead and so who are you talking to well physically the boy was truly dead but there was another person called the boy that is the spirit because Jesus is the spirit he was not talking there was a spirit that was not dead yet it is the spirit that was carrying the destiny not a dead body there and so if you happen to be under the sound of my voice and they thought they had been able to put a sickness in that body the body is not carrying destiny it is the spirit the bible says there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of god giveth him So destiny is fulfilled. Young man, comma. I say unto thee, comma. He is putting the passing of the boy against his passing. Amaga. And Yamaga. The passing of the boy and the passing of the Christ. Young man immediately the young man is supposed to salute the voice i say not that saith the lord i am the lord and so i say well oh, hang on a minute because at this point jesus was speaking as the one who himself and his father the creator of the universe he's saying that young man i like it i say unto thee you should know even if your english was not good in school now you don't put a comma and start the arise with a capital a but the reason why he said young man i say unto thee arise arise in capital there was a passing and now let's play so he was saying to the young man well physically you are dead but there is something that is going to come into you and that name of that thing 
is arise. From today, may something get into you that you will rise from wherever you find yourself. May you be that overcomer that God has called you to become. May you, is there, is there anybody here? Is there somebody here? Young man, I say unto you, arise. Ooh. The Bible says, and the young man that was lying down sat. You know what it means? It means that Jesus, the first point was that Jesus is affected. By our predicament the second point in this is that jesus is able to adjust your position that he will never leave you in the state he will find you he found the boy lying but when he placed his hand on the boy the boy got up from today may your business get up from today may your families get up from today may your ministry get up from today may you arise Come on, look for somebody and say, arise. Can you look for somebody and say, neighbor? Oh, neighbor, I say unto you, arise. Young man, I say unto you, arise. And Jesus, the boy is sad. On the bed, oof, sat in the casket, Sca sat on the bier. He was lying, but when Jesus placed his hand, he adjusted his position. That what was carrying to his death, that his coffin became his palanquin. Well, those of you who have never lived in a village before, you don't know what is called a palanquin. Let me, let me probably help you. That is coffin. Because the guys were carrying the dead boy. Like an Otumfo or any of the chiefs are having their festivals. And they are being carried. They were carrying the boy. The boy did not jump out of the casket. He sat and they were still carrying. From today, ay, 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 whatever was to have sent you to your grave, God is going to give you that overcomer's endorsement. One of God, the beautiful thing is that when you become an overcomer, those who are supposed to carry you to your grave hold you to see life. Maybe let me help you. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can borrow five minutes. Just, just five minutes. Five minutes. The Bible says the boy sat. And the boy began to speak. I have read all the works of Josephus. I've read the complete works of Josephus, the historian. I've read the complete works of St. Augustine of Assisi. I've read the complete works of St. Francis. I've read the sacraments. I've done the Humanetica Sacra. I've read their works. I have tried to find out what was the boy saying. And all the works in the world that I have read, nobody has been able to tell me what the boy said. I wrote to the American Theological Institution and I said unto them, I think I know what the boy said. They asked me, what do you mean, young man from Africa? What do you mean? You mean you know what the boy said? How will you know? 
I said, yes, sir. I think I know what the boy said. Because if I was the one who was dead and he brought me to life, I would have only two words to say. And my words would have been, thank you. Thank you that I was dead and you brought me back to life. Thank you. Thank you. They said my family won't do well. And if you've blessed us now, thank. I told them I think I know what the boy said. I think he said only two words. It was just thank you. Because he could remember where he was and where he picked him from. I don't know how many of you will have those two words tonight. You know where he picked you from. You might not have many words to say, but you can look at Jesus and say, thank. Can you tap three people, give them a high five and tell them, let your thank you be the word you speak. Come on, come on, look at somebody and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let me, let me put the loose ends together to make the scripture more relevant for application because what you were doing was interpretation of the test that should drive it home the bible says and the boys sat up and jesus gave the boy back to the mother because miracles have addresses maybe you did not get that let me let me look for some this place was weak let me get miracles have addresses the miracle god has for you will never miss its road it will find you i don't know maybe can i find somebody here the miracle god has for you it will never miss its road it will find can you look for somebody and tell the person, my miracle will never miss his road. My miracle, my miracle, my miracle, my miracle. It will never miss his road. My, my miracle will never. When the boy was brought back to life, Jesus gave the boy to the mother. Because a miracle will always have an address. Uh, the miracle was to a person the miracle was not for the boy it was for the mother the boy was not the one Jesus had the compassion for the compassion was for the mother the boy was just a tool that Jesus used to bring joy to the mother and so when the miracle was done Jesus knew that this miracle is not supposed to be a walkabout it's supposed to be for a woman and I told you the mother no name anonymity suggests inclusiveness <laughs> that your miracle will never lose this road it will never miss road in 2019 can I now preach to you? My title was Hang On A Minute. Because all hopes were gone for the woman. Everything was lost for the woman. There was nothing more to be said. The eulogy had been read and, and preached and they had sung all the hymnals. Everything had been done. And so the woman was just going to see off a baby boy. And Jesus said, no, you can't bury this boy. Hang on just a minute. And when the boy came back to life, it was given to the woman because it was the woman that the miracle was for. And God sent me to Harvest Chapel International today to tell somebody that it is you that the miracle is for. And in 2019, no matter how you feel you have been delayed, your miracle. Maybe I don't have a lot of people who are faith filled, filled with the Holy Ghost, but even if it's left to the last second of the last minute of the last day of 2019, I still believe. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is left with the last second of the last minute of the last hour of the last day of December whatever he has said about me pass me not all gentle savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me Jesus give the boy back to the mother I read the test and if he had ended there I would have been excited already but the Bible says then fear gripped all and I came to realize the reason why people don't fear our God is because the miraculous has left us that somebody can stand on radio and spew garbage in the name of common sense because interestingly we have reduced i was in one of the countries of the world western wells and i was in, in an interview and they asked me um dr michael you appear to be a bit philosophical i said i am a philosopher i have a master's in philosophy i have a phd in philosophy so i qualified to call myself i didn't borrow the doctorate i didn't buy it on the internet it's not an it's not an honorary doctorate i said okay so what is your stance on gays i said and they said to me that uh, you, your people appear to be frowning on gayism but there are people who are naturally born gay i said uh, are you talking to michael the academic michael the african michael the young boy or michael the preacher said i'm talking to michael the package i said i'm happy you said michael the package because on top of the package is the preacher and as a preacher i have a stance i said the reason why the church is losing the argument for gay is because we are making it a morality issue it is not a morality issue because with Im with morality issues we have a lot to handle the person who is in church who is chasing another person's husband we have people who are thieves who are hanging around if you leave your bag here you come and somebody would have picked your your phone those are morality issues and so if we argue that they will tell us then most of your people are on the same scale i said to them it is not a morality issue it is a faith issue our faith is against that they looked at me i said it is about faith no morality is that really i said yes i said even it was ab not about faith why don't you take it to islam because your faith will not allow you to bring it there so why do you bring it to us I remember the last time Nana Banamwa asked me that on TV3 um, New Day, one of them years ago, about four years ago. And I said, Why don't you send it to the mosque? Then she said, I think she had lost her bearing. She had forgotten who she was talking to. So she said, But you say, Christ but Christianity. You are supposed to be tolerant i said you've armed me i said are you by any way implying that muslims are not tolerant he said no i don't mean that i said i also didn't mean that <laughs> the reason why we have a lot of people 
spewing so many things, dumping them on the internet, allowing our shallow-minded generation to feast on garbage is because we are not demonstrating power. We are trying to demonstrate logic, but the things of God cannot be logically explained. You can't explain. The other day they went to the boy and said, boy, the guy who healed you, he cannot be a clean man. He's using demons. He said, well, all that I know is that I was blind. But now, you see, if we demonstrate power, it will silence every voice. All right, my time is up. Please be upstanding. My, my one eye is up. I, I, I might continue where I'm leaving it sometime. Because it needs the icing. But the icing is fun. I've already exceeded one. Um, forgive me. I know harvest people are people of your time. And you are tolerant too. <laughs> you are people of your time, but you are also tolerant. Come on, look at somebody and tell the person we are tolerant here. Yeah. Come on, can you give somebody a high five and tell the person, this is Harvest Chapel. Come on, look at somebody and say, this is Harvest Chapel. Um, I, I, I pray that Jesus will tarry and favor will find me for Bishop to bring me here one time to talk about harvest. Not the, the name, the word, harvest, is, is a hybrid word. Oh, come back. <laughs> Please lift up your right hand. I, how many of you are ready for this? You're ready for what God wants to do right now. It is in the demonstration of power that we will silence the world. It is not in common sense. Because the things of God, the mind can't wrap around it. He's too big for human comprehension. So there is no way you can explain him to be understood. In fact, I told a Bible school that invited me in the US, I was giving them their inaugural speech years ago. I told them God is comfortable with being misunderstood. Now the fact that we don't understand him doesn't make him uncomfortable. He is comfortable with being misunderstood. Because Christianity is not mass production. Many are called. Few are chosen. You can't walk with Jesus with recognition. You walk with him with revelation. It is after your revelation that you make your observation and your observation will lead you to your interpretation before you make your application. There is an order. They move together. Will you lift your right hand? I, I know I've taken your time. It's a beautiful Saturday evening. Most of you were supposed to be somewhere else. I thank God that you are not in a club. in a sacred space called sanctuary will you lift up your right hand with me people of God wherever you are I just want you to pray only one prayer I have the Lord from tonight adjust my position only one prayer point I told you that he is able to adjust your position I don't know where you are, but God can adjust your position right now. He can move you above where you are. He can lift you beyond where you are. He can exalt you above where you are. Just pray to God and say, God, just adjust 
Will you lift up your voice and begin to pray? Lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Feel like praying for somebody. Lift up your voice. Adjust my position. Adjust. 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 Adjust my position. Will you lift your voice and begin to pray? Adjust. Adjust. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Can you stretch forth your hands on the altar? This is harvest. The time will come. But what it really means is the word harvest is buried in a word called time. Okay. Harvest is only possible after a process. except a grain falls into the ground and dies it abides alone so there is a dying stage then there is the shooting up stage then it grows into maturity then it bears fruit but when you see a fruit it doesn't mean time it means the beginning of an end until the fruit matures that is the end of a cycle and that is the only time called harvest so harvest is not possible before the completion of a cycle if you happen to be here god gave us this name because when you step here god completes a cycle and refurbishes your life now stretch forth your hands on the altar let's do something I want to do something very quickly it will bless you i want you to pray as you've never prayed before that the grace on this house will speak favorably on your behalf i'm hearing something i'm hearing i just heard i am adjusting the position of men and women under the sound of your voice so in a short period of time ministries are about to shoot up one more time our families are about to experience establishment ay, 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 ay. today i was talking to a young man who said to me dog but 100 ghana need 200 ghana notes here and yo i'm saying okay why said oh, it's only good when you are doing business but can you imagine if 200 note falls to the ground <laughs> so two million are tough of the <laughs> headache and he said hey be a new crew, two million 200 ghana now a tough of now obinama when you ask i said yeah 200 two million Then I began to laugh. I said, "Na, and yes, she's going to say, 'She ye na, I'm tough up." But I could tell that what was influencing and motivating this young man is poverty, poverty mentality. Maybe he's here, so I don't want him to hear it. 
You know, poverty can make you think wild. I didn't create my own thing. I mean, I didn't create my own counsel. The first I did is say, I to be a tough form. How? Now, how did you create it? Send in some kind when you can't get home, a coin, a bit to me, and not tear the bottom. Now, a tough form. Now, be a fa. Pastor Tinu Sawa Hawati. So, when you are a person, that is never your problem. There are shops in the world that if you get in the shops, price tags are not on the products. There, now, if you even ask them what is the price of this, they won't sell to you. Because they say people who can afford it don't care about the price. Oh, yet me mau kasa by heart. Timi bisa bisa niyo me biya niyo ma kwa huya. Now, so cry, 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 and saying, To last a cry. What come and you put that to the now, now cry, it's a cry, 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 and he's saying, To the last a part. Wiggy, what try, there be our pentis war, and to go back around, no moody see, because over over Sansa, now the last week, you got so bad, mommy discount. What discount, ya? Last, last, or can last? I don't want to say it's a last, last. <laughs> Stretch both your hands on the altar. What do you need in life is the grace to excel, the favor to do well. Because in the midst of abundance, lack is never thought about there is nobody I would did you also come it's not possible when you are eating you don't think about hunger because that those senses are numbed by the satisfaction the food brings you want to pray to God whatever grace is here Harvest happens to be one of the most beautiful churches you'll find. You know that. In Accra, very few auditoriums can match up to this. You know that. Oh, so the only my yash, but it's not on me the day, but TV, so yeah, home with them. Be who they may patch them. Oh, they are here. Oh, they are I was there one time when a mad boy, a mad boy came to me that he wants me to be the spiritual father. I said, okay, thank you for envisaging in your short-sightedness that I can become. Because he was coming with a Lincoln Navigator with chrome wheels spinning. Blinky all over. So I said to him, All right, um, I want you to come next week. Come, I and I'll have a conversation with you. So he came the other the, the other week, the, as in the following week. And when he got there, he thought I was going to talk to him. I said, I want you to drive. I will follow you. I want to see where your church is. We went through Lungu Lungu. Lungu. You know Lungu Lungu? Iki Iki. Iki Iki way. We, we, we swam. We went through dry patches. We went through valleys. Swam. Like fish pond. Catfish was in it. We were swimming. We got to the church of this boy and he had broken towels on the altar. The whole place. He had done concrete, broken towels on the altar and he's driving 
Lincoln with spinning wheels. So I looked at the boy. I said, Oh boy, me just show us in your frail. One can say, Yes, or be born again. Because nobody will be called by God, love God, and do what you have done. And Kobe Tonka and the Ayanya Mejuma. Now we believe in Yanko Posse and Yamebe Mana for Fro. We can say, Your uncle Fobio Mopemba, a spiritual sense, but your core homo. No cry, the ministry. There is grace here. Aha. Adum. Ewaha. Stretch forth your hands here. I want you to carry something that will amplify your steps. Once your position is adjusted, all eyes will see it. The Bible says it gripped all. True and authentic miracles are the ones that although the recipient doesn't talk the miracle makes noise the bible says it was rumored abroad in shrebi wa ebao suwa okra wonka se obi abe unse we die unyame esran sen shreni bin e radeka chem suwa de tunkro fobi suwa asisi ya tina unsa ewa outan su that the grace on this house the mandate upon this commission will fall on your life right now say lord jesus as i lift up my voice and as i begin to pray adjust my position give me the grace to complete my assignment open the windows of the heavens and bring blessings from on high pour upon me fresh anointing for maximum impact in the name of jesus Lift up your voice and pray the last prayer. Come on, lift up your voice. 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 Hey! 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 Adjust my position. Come on, lift up your voice. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. Let the grace. My colobo shine the level My bracoso segrete mocha. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Give Baba 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 Baba